Harry's wife. 92.40. Money, money, money. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and no, I'm not going to break into song and sing one of ABBA's hits. Instead, I'm going to direct you to the Telegraph newspaper with an article about Harry's wife. The article by Hannah Finesse tells us, No business like show business for the Sussexes as they launch new entertainment firms. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have laid out a blueprint for their work outside the royal family with a series of business filings, showing more than half their new companies set up for the entertainment business. The couple, who now live in California and have already signed deals to produce Netflix shows, so far Square Root of Fuck All produced and a Spotify podcast, so far one, are to pursue entertainment in earnest after stepping away from their life as working members of the royal family to find financial independence. Last week it emerged that the couple had set up 11 companies in Delaware, the state known for its flexible business laws and low personal income tax rates, see parts passing. The Telegraph can reveal that two further companies were registered on the same date by the same lawyer and business manager who have represented the Duchess since she was an actress. Now, two points arise out of this. The first is, the Telegraph reported on the 11 companies being set up in Delaware last week and is keeping a very careful eye on the company formations and activity of the Sussexes. This is part of the bite back from the media as a consequence of her behaviour in the case against Associated Newspapers Limited. Furthermore, why is this being done? Well, the establishment of these companies, of course, will be done for legal reasons, to protect certain interests so that if one fails it doesn't impact upon another. So, it is sound business advice. However, this demonstrates that there is a real and increasing need for cash money. The lifestyle, of course, doesn't come cheap. The need for security, the need for the various nannies and maids and cleaners and gardeners, although they aren't at the moment jetting around the world, they obviously have a complement of staff that needs to be paid, and with that comes a sizable cost. Also, of course, you are fully aware of the significant PR activity of Harry's wife through the PR agencies which appears in the PR Puff pieces, which I regularly comment on. And indeed, we just can't avoid because they flow thick and fast as a necessity of her desire to assert control unconsciously and facade management. It's evident that there is a shift in direction. The Sussexes set themselves up as bananatarians, supposedly caring individuals interested in the environment, the plight of the oppressed, defenders of the weak, champions of the downtrodden. Of course, we've commented elsewhere upon the wafer-thin aspect of those charitable behaviours where basically they've utilised other people's money to make them look good. That's not the suggestion that there's anything untoward in terms of embezzlement, but rather the donations that have been highlighted, and indeed they repeatedly have to highlight them for the purposes of assertion of control and facade management, are utilising the gifts and money provided by other outfits, the general public to their foundation, Procter & Gamble, an example of that also. And it's not like they're repeatedly dipping into their own pockets, but it gives the appearance of that's what they're doing to demonstrate they are such kind and charitable individuals. And of course this is driven by Harry's wife, who needs to assert control and maintain that facade of being a caring bananatarian. But it would appear that their endeavours in that direction are probably going to be put on ice, and instead we're going to see a greater focus on entertainment. Why might that be? Well, quite possibly that charity isn't providing the cash that is needed, notwithstanding the allegations that they need only donate 5% of it to charitable endeavours and the rest could go on expenses, etc. It seems to me that the residual benefit that is money has come into increased focus. Why? Well, as I've explained earlier, as a consequence of the downward spiral... Because of her own actions and the collateral consequences which demonstrate her to be more and more unpopular, the recent own goal by the ridiculous boozy report, 
we have seen the many instances of bad PR. For example, the good shoeing that she got off the consequence of the Goldfinger dress, the failure to be invited to the Oscars, the Barmer birthday snub, the Met Gala snub, the monstrosity that was the appearance at the Freedom Gala with all the adverse commentary that came with that, the ridicule for the fridge on the stage at the COVID vaccination event, the mockery of what took place in New York, the adverse observations made about the appearance at the school in Harlem, and the apparent shutting down of a YouTube account that revealed what had really gone on there. All of these PR on girls keep happening, and they are happening because Harry's wife is inherently unlikable, and her actions and her behaviours continue to represent that, and more and more people are seeing it. And rather than respond to that by retreating and staying out of the public eye, for good, her narcissism means that she has to meet that threat to control head-on through the PR activity, and that all costs money. And in order to prime the pump, the money has to come from somewhere. And although they've signed those deals and produced more or less fuck all so far, they're going to have to get their fingers out. And instead... They've been advised, you need to get on with that, you need to start making some money through entertainment, but set up these separate entities just in case they fold. So, for example, if they created one company, let's call it Harry's Wife's Inc., and all of their projects went into that one company, it might be the case that they have a particular success which makes money, and then another one which makes money, and then they have something which absolutely bombs with a significant loss. Because all of the money from those three projects is going to Harry's wife, Inc., that would mean that the bombed project may well wipe out the profits from the other two. So what they're doing is they're creating separate pots so that project A goes in that company over there, and if it succeeds, the profits there are ring-fenced and protected and can be drawn upon. Project B goes into that com separate company over there if that bombs, then there is a loss, the company goes insolvent, it's closed down, but it doesn't cross-pollute to the other companies. And it's doubtless the case that they've received accountancy and legal advice to that extent. They need to get more money in, and they need to do so for the purposes of ensuring that the PR can be funded. Because of her lack of cognitive function, not that she's completely stupid, but nor is she hyper-intelligent, and because she's blinded by her narcissism, she is, in, she is incapable of realising that her actions are causing the problems and she should rein her activity in. Her narcissism will not allow that to happen. The narcissism has to get those prime aims in the moment, and that results in collateral consequences, as I've repeatedly explained to you. When those collateral consequences come along, they have to be dealt with, which means more PR, which means more costs. And therefore, we are now seeing a gearing up almost like assembling troops on the border, for the purposes of trying to make a big push into the entertainment world. So, watch what happens. The difficulty is, of course, you have to have some talent, and she hasn't got any. There are some individuals who are able to make such a little go a very long way, and there are certain individuals, narcissist or not, who are hugely talented when it comes to writing, singing, creating screenplays, dancing inventing things, being an entertainer or a broadcaster, they're very witty, they're able to come up with brilliant off-the-cuff comments and so forth. She possesses none of those things, and therefore it would be very interesting to see what is actually created. It might be the case that she continues to try and leverage the name and looks to hire those who've got the talent, who are prepared to receive a payment under a contract, and that she makes it look like she's done the hard work instead. Wouldn't it be the first time that she's gone down that route? And, of course, that's character trait acquisition. The Telegraph explains that the companies appear to have names which are meaningful to the couple, with one, Cloverdale Inc., bearing the same name as the street that the Duchess lived on with her mother in Los Angeles when she was young. Both Cloverdale and a second company, River Soul Productions Inc., are set up explicitly in the entertainment industry and join companies Hampshire LLC, Bridgemont LLC and IPHW LLC. I wonder if that means I play Harry's wife. 
The couple are also already known to be working under the names Archwell Productions to create their television output for Netflix and Archwell Audio, which is expected to produce podcast episodes under a deal with Spotify. Don't hold your breath. They total seven separate companies specifically in the entertainment industry, along with another two publishing companies and three investment firms to match their one not-for-profit formation. The companies appear to be a significant change of direction for the Sussexes, who have emphasised their dedication to their philanthropy and non-profit work through Archwell. The pair appear on the paperwork for two publishing companies, Pekka Publishing, which has the rights to the Duchess's children's book, The Bench, and is thought to be named after the Spanish word for her for her freckles, and Orinoco Publishing, reported to house the Duke's forthcoming autobiography. The three other companies, Nemawashi Holdings, Baobab Holdings, and RPV Holdings, are set up for investments. The companies reach incorporated by Richard Geno, the Duchess's longtime attorney, and Andrew Mayer, her business manager. There's more from the article that just tells us about things that have happened already, which so we needn't go into that. But what this does demonstrate is that there is a shift, that the philanthropic banana Tarian stance seems to be put to one side. What, for instance, is happening with the paid parental leave? What's going on with the 4040 initiative? They seem to have stalled. And instead, of course, exhibiting the fact that all of that was just a facade and there was no meaningful desire to support all of that, not in the way that somebody with emotional empathy would have, the shift comes back to herself and her needs, namely assertion of control through positive publicity, which requires PR agencies, which require money. And therefore, the shift is now to money generation through entertainment. Oh, see how the quest to be a bananatarian was particularly short-lived. And that demonstrates the absence of emotional empathy. It was merely for facade management and the representation of cognitive empathy. What do you think about this shift in direction? What do you think about the change from supposed philanthropy to entertainment? And where do you see it going? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.